Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. My name is Matt Darnell, host of Hawaii Tech Today. I'm pleased to be here with uh, Greg Jackson. He is, uh, Greg here is a military veteran for 20 years of IT experience. But thank, thank you very much for your service. Appreciate that. Uh, he, he's done phone support, web development, you know, consulting at the, at the C level, you know, very, very high level with folks. Father of three children, and congratulations on that for sure. And he's really got a passion for technology and people. Um, he's got a real technical background and, and has the ability to, to bridge the gap between technical uh, the discussions and what people actually need. Because as we know, traditional end users don't, don't speak in technical terms. They, they know what they need, how they want to do that. Um, but yeah, he, he is, is very relatable and we're very pleased to have you, Greg. Oh, thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So today we're going to talk about uh, internet providers uh, in Hawaii and, and the differences and, and, some, and some things that you will find with that. But uh, we'll, we'll start off with, with some current events and, and some of the things I, I'd seen out there was that uh, uh, Shillage, we were one of the main lock providers, and, and I, I always thought on my home, you know, we have the code to get in there. But now you can link your Alexa, your Amazon Alexa, with your lock. So to get into your house, you just say your password, your private PIN, and the door just unlocks. That's amazing. Do you, um, how, tell me a little bit more about how, how it works. Yeah, so when, when, when you get the lock, you go ahead and, and you enable unique PIN. So it would be if, if we were living in the same household, I would have a pin, you would have a pin, and then to get in, you just stand in front of your door and you can just say say the password and, and the, the door door will open there. And it, it gets to the point where you know you think it's 2018, why do we you know why, why do I still have keys for my car, for for all, all these different things? Um, it, it it seems to me that more things are gonna be tied to cellular phones yeah. and, and, and have that kind of identification and I always complain, why do I have to have a key to get in my car? You know, how, how many different ways are there to identify me from my voice, from, you know, but my fingerprints, all those kind of things. I, I'm, I'm sure it's just a matter of time until, you know, cars come that way where you just, it's a fingerprint, you know, to go ahead and start the car and stop the car. Yeah. Have you, that sounds a little bit like the, um, what I saw in uh, Shark Tank. Have you seen that? I have not, no. So Shark Tank, they had uh, some folks on there where they uh, showed the remote lock. So you've got uh, proximity locks, you've got using the internet, um, you can send temporary locks. Um, I don't know, I didn't follow the, the history or what the outcome was, but it's very interesting. So it was an app you put on your phone? I think, and, yeah, I think that's kind of how it worked, yeah. Okay, well, and, and the opportunities are endless. And, and Amazon even has that service now where this person, instead of leaving on your doorstep, right? I mean, they will I heard open your door and put yeah. it there. And apparently there's a camera on them the whole time. So they literally take two steps inside the house, put the package down, and then do, I'm not sure what carrier that, that works with. And it's possible that's only a trial of the main. Cars part. too, right? Is, is on cars too? So you could, I think they were doing your the cars mold. will go in the house? No. <laughs> no. I think they were doing, uh, they would actually deliver it to your vehicle. Really? Yeah, I think that's the last thing I heard. Oh, and put it in the trunk or what have you? Or, or wherever you allow them to oh, go wow. into. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It, it's just, you know, the, this Internet of Things is, is such a huge, yeah. um, and, and, you know, with, with all, these, all these things connected to the Internet, it, it's just, it's Skynet. <laughs> Here's the Terminator movie. It, it's absolutely Skynet. So to get in your car to open the door, and I still remember, you know, this, this hasn't happened yet, but... You know, people, I was reading something, this is 10 years ago, and you were somebody really visionary that, that you know, your, your refrigerator knows you're low on milk. So your refrigerator tells your watch. Your watch tells your car. So as you're driving down the road, your car is interrogating all these stores trying to figure out who's got the best price on milk. Your car knows what you, what you need, so it, it's plugged in and, That's nice. and, and th those kind of things. So absolutely, it, it's really going to be a, a, a very, very connected uh, world. Um, and the um, a, a, another thing I, I, I was reading about. Have you ever used Move, Movie Pass? No. Yeah, Move, Movie Pass. It's a subscription that you, you you can buy, and it used to be that you could go to a movie a day, and you had you had an app on your phone, and you'd walk up to the theater. You had to be within a. It used GPS, so you couldn't do it from your home. They wanted you to be there at the theater, mm. and you could go to a movie a day. It was nine dollars and like ten dollars a month for that, and just amazing how it would work with the app. You just walk up, you go, "This is a movie I want to see." You punch in your app, 
and then they, they would give you your ticket. But uh, yeah, so if anyone, at, at every city, they're, they're going downhill now, and it's changed from one a day to, I believe, four a month. I can see why. And, 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 <laughs> in their unlimited path, but yeah. So th those kinds of, uh, of, of, of things really are, are tough. And even, um, have you ever, I, I've never done a Lyft or an Uber. Have you ever ridden in one of those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, they're, they're across the board. There's, there's a wide variety of experiences I've had. Okay. <laughs> Lyft and Uber or one, both? Or? I think Uber is the one I, Uber, I mainly Uber's ride. Uber the main in. one, yeah, I, I, I've never ridden one. But with Lyft, you're gonna be able to buy a monthly pass. Similar um, to you know the, the bike rentals you, you know you find around town, you, know, you can just have this and you have this pass and you pay maybe I think it's like four hundred dollars a month and you get sixty rides you know, where, wherever you need to go you know within with, within this area. So it's just a matter of you you're, you know you're buying a ride and I, I can't help but think that cars you know I, I, when, when our kids are our age right when, when they're old. Um, a car is not going to be something everybody owns. I'm not old. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uh, but it'll be one of those things. It'll be kind of like an ambulance. Right. The very rich people will have, they have their own ambulance. You know, they have a big mansion, they have their own ambulance. But you and I, when we need an ambulance, we call for it. Right. If we want to take a plane, we go to the airport to get it. You know, yeah. but, but you know, rich people you know, have their own plane, that type of thing. But the vast majority of people, they're not going to own cars. Why would you own a car? When you need a car, you call for it, and then and, and, and you get that. And so it's like a subscription-based almost. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you have a subscription, or it'll be like a short-term rental, you know, where you can go to a, pick up a car, take it, and drop it off at another place. And, oh, yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, just like with the bikes that they have around town. So it's really getting that pay away. And with, this, with the self-driving automation, yeah. um, it's, it's, there's no question. You know, in the middle of the night, you need a car that just shows up right in front of your door and, um, and that kind of, kind of thing. So I think Lyft and Uber and, and it's got to be, you know, GM and all those companies got to be going crazy trying to figure out what are they going to do to keep people buying cars. And they're all, they're all going to be electric and they're going to be, just like your Roomba. Your Roomba vacuum cleaner knows when it's running low on battery and it goes home to recharge, right? Yeah. Same thing with these cars. They'll just drive around to their low on battery and There'll be three or four tow trucks around, you know, to, to maintain them. But I really think 20, 30 years, owning a car, you know, is, is going to be a, a, a luxury there. You yeah, know, when like, you factor in, like, the, the car payment or um, the fuel, the insurance, parking fees, you know, four, six hundred bucks a month doesn't sound that bad. Absolutely not. And, and it's, you know, you, half the time you read that an AI car, you know, the self-driving is safer yeah. than a human. And the other half of the time you read, it's, it's just as bad or even worse. And, yeah. and like here in Hawaii, the way they're cutting up H1, you know, there, there's, it's hard for me to know which one is the lane because they kind of dig in and they take out the old strips, and they put in new strips, and you know, I'm trying to figure out which one. I can imagine a computer. Yeah. You know, and and you know, they, they, they get to that, that point where they talk about with this AI in cars that you know, a car, for some reason, it's come to the time where a car has got two choices. It's going to run over the lady with the baby carriage, or it's going to crash into these school kids. Yeah. And and how how does a machine make those kind of? I mean, that, that was only for whatever reason it came, you know came came to that point. So it's just so much to think about. You know, with the AI and how, how those things are going. And um, and you know, and speaking of AI, you know, one of the one of the new Microsoft updates. Um, you know, they they they're doing their. Have you, have you, ever, have you ever capture your screen? On, on your computer, yeah, yeah. and what, what they'll do now, it's gotten a lot smarter. And it, this is actually, I think, going to be really cool, that if you see something, if you screenshot, like, shoes, it'll automatically look for those shoes for you, say, on Amazon, or I'm sure it'll be a Bing, a Microsoft Bing search for that. So just add AI, like, if you, oh, what is this person? You know, you're watching a movie, and you screenshot that person. It'll, it'll bring you to their IMDB page, that kind of a thing. So. Um, to, to me, that, that, that's really smart uh, kind of, you know, artificial intelligence where, you know, that, that's what computers are supposed to do, compute, right? you know, and, and, and those kind of AIs. And I mean, I'm looking forward to the day where, you know, my outlook all night long, it should just be analyzing my email. So I could come up in the morning and say, show me the last email from Greg about the contract for customer XYZ. 
and it's already analyzed and, and, and got that, you know, that meta information out of the email, right. you know, what we have to do now. Because um, again, I mean, you know, it's true, I, mean, a computer, I tell my boys, they don't believe it, but a computer, that used to be a person. Yeah. <laughs> that was a job. You were a computer. Are you these numbers? I want you to compute them. Yep. You know, do those kind of things. So, so the, you know, I think that kind of AI, when you bring that into something you do have that makes your life easier, is 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 really really good. Um, yeah, and and <laughs> if anybody here has gotten the been bit by the black dot bug, have have, have you heard about that at all? No, tell me more. Yeah, um, uh, there, there's there's something called Unicode, which is, but you know, we're all used to normal, what are called ASCII characters, the, the alphabet mm -hmm. and the zero and the numbers, and there are special smiley faces and, and those kind of characters. But, and that's really good if you speak English and you write you know, in, in, in English. Uh, but if you know, all other languages, you know, that, that does not work. So Unicode kind of encompasses everything. And there are thousands of Unicode characters, and some of them are hidden, like what tells it to go to the next line to back up, to go forward. So on Instagram and Snapchat, people are embedding thousands of these commands, the hidden commands, in a little black dot. So on this screen, you see a little black dot. If you click it, it freezes your phone instantly because your phone just goes crazy trying to go forward, back, forward, back, jump back and forth. Yeah, so it's WhatsApp, it's on Android, it's on iOS, it's on Snapchat. All those kind of things. So if you get something strange that says, you know, push me or click here on your on your on that black dot, you definitely don't uh, don't click don't, on the black don't, dot. Don't click the black. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, you know, and and I, I've got a little pop quiz for you here. Okay. Okay. Do you know how the Android releases are are, are named? Um. Sounds like pastries or. <laughs> They're after desserts. So C is this, B, you know, all, yep. all the way. Okay. So uh, I'm kind of disappointed. So you don't know any of the names of the Android releases? Um, like what, what was O? You know what O was? Nope. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> all right. Next. It was Oreo, by the way. Oh. Okay. So speaking of Uber, um, I, 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 was, I was reading that Uber in 2020, they're going to have a flying car service. So we're beyond just the car. It's a flying car now. And they have these spaceports. And you get an Uber car to take you to the spaceport. And then you catch the Uber plane to the other spaceport. And then you're going to go ahead and catch an Uber car to your final destination. And it's all going to be autonomous. Is and it's like Elon's thing where he's going to go underground with his, his, his cars? No, that, that, that's a choo-choo train. That's like, what is that? Is, that? is that L.A. to San Francisco? Or is that L.A. to Vegas? I thought he was going to have um, actual vehicles, but if it, you might be right. It might be more of a rail system. Well, I'm sure I'm right. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, and, and w w when I look at the, uh, you know, the, the prototypes for that, I mean, guys are right. It looks like the Jetsons, like George Jetson's house. It was long, a cylinder. You had little, you know, little putt-putt spaceships going in and that out. That just doesn't sound very safe. You know, it, 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 like, like air buses, 99.9% .9 of the time, they fly themselves. They take off, they land. You know, they, they, I, I was talking to a pilot one time, and he says, all the money I've ever made in my career, they'll be for five minutes. There'll be five minutes where I need to do something that's really important. Wow. Where if I, if I do the wrong thing, but in this 30 years of flying, there'll be five minutes in his career. Kind of like the Sully guy when he, you know, flew into the... Um, the Hudson River, you know, he didn't fly, he landed there kind of thing. Is it kind of like the Amazon delivery thing where they're doing the drones and they're delivering packages? No, this is for people. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. imagine the amount of traffic that's coming, right? Now you've, you know, we're talking about drones, we're talking about cars. Oh, it's scary. What elevation yeah. are we talking about? I mean. Yeah, and I, I, I imagine there'll be corridors, you know, for yeah. different kind yeah. of things. and. I mean, I doubt you could have that right next to Hon you know, you know, Honolulu Airport, but I could see them something in Honolulu and maybe something out in the country, something of a couple A, that, you know, or even Kanyoi, you know, you know to go over the Kotal out. It's interesting. And, and I'm sure they'll have tourist packages where you just want to go over Yellowstone, you want to look at the Kotal Laos, or, you know, you're in West Virginia and you want to look at the mountains out there kind of thing. So yeah. it, it, it will de 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 definitely be there. Um, and an another real interesting thing was, was Tesla roof tiles. And you know, te you know, you've heard of Tesla before. They they make the cars and they have the Tesla power walls and and now they have you know they've announced these, but they talked about how they're working. They're just roof tiles to look like regular roof tiles, 
supposed to be cheaper than shingle when you when you count the electricity you're going to save over the next 20 years. Right. But they just produce those. There's no panels on your roof. You just put regular tiles. You, you line them up like they look like regular tiles, but they're they're producing electricity, and they're all networked in. Um, I want some for my car. Uh, it, and I, I I think that's very possible. You know, it's funny whenever you look at a, a competition of people, then they're trying to go a long distance with just solar powered, right. or they look nothing like regular cars. So what you and I want to drive is very different from what, if, if economy and saving oil and energy was the most important thing. Forget about comfort, forget about air conditioning, you know, no Bluetooth, you're, you're, you're lying down, you, know, you have bicycle spoke wheels, you know, we're not gonna have the spinner rims, those kind of things. So yeah, it, it, it's really an, an exciting thing. And, and I, I just hope with, you know, with, with, with HEI, like I, I live in Kailua, and I can't get the power plan that lets me put, you know, um, panels on and sell back to, 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 to the grid. You know, they say that our grid is oversaturated, and, and um, it, it's really a shame when you look at, you know, how, you know, they're stifling, you know. Uh, that, what does oversaturated mean? I mean, it, you, feed, it, you feed too much power back. I mean, aren't we using well, more than? I, I, what I've heard is that on the days that there's not sun, they don't have the capacity Oh, okay. For the houses, because they're u u used to that. Interesting. Yeah. So again, my, my name is Matt Darnell with uh, Hawaii Tech Today. Thank you for joining us. We're going to take a short break and see you in, in a little while. Hello. Hey, aloha, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Andrew Lanning, the security guy. I host a program called Security Matters Hawaii. And I hope you'll join us on Fridays. Uh, we air at 10 a.m. And we're going to be talking about those security things that really should be important to you. And, you know, maybe get behind the scenes on some, some things that you may not know about the industry or about products or even about your habits. Um, security is all about people, processes, and products. And we hope to bring that to you in an informative and um, hopefully a useful way. So, again, 10, 10 a.m. on Fridays, Security Matters Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha again, my name is Matt Darnell, and I am the host for Hawaii Tech Today. Again, I'm joined here by uh, Greg Jackson. Very, very, again, very, very glad to have you here, Greg. So let, let's, let's talk internet now. Um, and, you know, I, I've, I've been in this business, uh, you know, this is my third day in the business, but, <laughs> but I, I can remember uh, when a 56K kilobit circuit, this frame relay, that was considered absolutely, I mean, that was the cat's meow. Um, and obviously that was probably mid 90s type of thing and, and, and it's changed a lot you know since, 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 since then um, but let, let, so let, let's talk about um, uh, different kinds of technology and right now we have three that, that, are, that are prevalent and one that's probably a little more on the fringe and the first one is, is cable and that company now is charter Charter, Spectrum, <laughs> Time Warner, Oceanic, Roadrunner. I, I, I think I think in reverse order that that that, that is okay. how it was. Yeah. yeah, and I still call them Charter. I still call them Roadrunner. I still call them all those kind of things, and 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 have that, and and they they bring you internet over the cable connection, and it, the same cable connection that brings you your uh, TV and have that. And you use a technology called, called DOCSIS, that, that, that's the protocol. It, it, it's, a, it's a great technology, even to the point that the latest specification lets you get 10 gigabytes down, excuse me, 10 gig, gigabits down and 10 gig up as well, symmetrical. But the thing that, that people always say about that is if you've got that one coax going down your street, everybody on your street is using that 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 bandwidth there, so it's not really a dedicated. It depends type. on the infrastructure. I mean, you've got some locations that uh, use coax out to a main junction box, and a lot of times, what you see in the infrastructure is um, fiber from the from the junction box back to uh, the office. So, 
um, and older infrastructures. And when you say office, what does that mean? So for cable companies and, and phone companies, they, they centralize at some location and they use different technologies to uh, manage the traffic. So phone companies might use a CO um, and then, they, then they, they, they have like a backhaul of data. And then with uh, cable companies, they have coax from the house to the curb and then maybe to the curb, to, they have like a junction box. So they have a bunch of coax cables aggregating you know, in a small box and then they use you know, like uh, fiber optics from, from there on back. So if you've got the right capacity, depending on your cable infrastructure, you're not gonna see a whole lot of uh, you know, choking of speed. But mm -hmm. in some locations, you have coax going all the way back or even further back, and that's when you run into situations like that. And, and it, it's kind of synonymous, let me know if you agree, with like roads. You've got H1, which is four or five lanes, and that's your fiber optic cable. So it's, it's the backbone. And then you've got these exits. And you maybe from there you exit down to a two-lane road. And then from there you exit down to a one-lane road. And from there you exit down to a driveway. So you've got the backbone that's feeding everything has got a lot of bandwidth. And they kind of peel off of that for every stop. Because actually there's only three, I think, three entry points in and out of Hawaii to go to the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, so everything starts there. And that's a matter of where, where, where does it go? We Hawaii tell downtown. And, and, and that that so so obviously so, so with, with cable um, you know you're able to get your, your voice on the, you know in, internet and as well well, well as phone triple play and, yeah yeah you're able to do that what what and, and, and TV as well the triple play yeah and they always talk about the, the quad play with with the video and that type of thing so yeah, yeah so so coax is certainly a, 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 a great thing and and I think when charter the, the last one charter when, when they bought spectrum. That was a game changer in Hawaii. Uh, what we saw before was maybe for $300, you might get 50 down and 10 up. Yeah. But all of a sudden, they came to town and they brought mainland pricing. That was one good thing about that. They, when they brought that mainland pricing here, you get like 300 down, 20 up, th th those types of, which is a very, very fast connection you know, for $300, where before that would have been in incredible. And I, I think over coax, uh, today, they, they don't have what's, you know, that symmetric service where the download matches the upload. It's always the asymmetric, where it is the download faster than what you upload. So what, why is asymmetric okay for, for most businesses? Um, I'd say most businesses aren't in the business of uh, pushing data out. So a lot of businesses need to gather information. And there's a small handshake in the data connection that requires that a little bit of data go up. But unless you're a company that's um, you know, doing some kind of hosting, then you don't need a whole lot of data leaving your organization. And now it's even more interesting with cloud computing. You just have a small thin pipe going to say like a co-location or your cloud computing central location and then from there, uh, you can use internet connections that, that you have available there. And, and absolutely, because what you see when you're, when you're you working with the cloud computer, you're just seeing a picture right. of what's happening. So if you're downloading a 10 gigabyte file, that's not coming down to your computer, that, that's coming to the cloud, and all you're seeing is that picture. And, and likewise, just, you know, when you're watching the YouTube video, all you send up to the internet is the click that says, show me that that's video. Right, yeah. The high def stream coming down, that's why we need the more download. But if you're, let's, let's say like a ThinkTech here, they have a live feed going out to, out to the internet people to watch. That's when you would, might need a, long, a lot of upload. Uh, telemedicine's big like that. I mean, you've got some folks and institutions that are uh, incorporating telemedicine and they're not understanding the impact on their, their data requirements. Absolutely, yeah, I mean, because when, when, when a doctor wants to see you know, 45 you know, x-rays and the x-rays were taken at St. Uh, St. Francis West, Queens <laughs> West, is that what it's called? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Out, out there in Emma. Yep. And they're, but they're, 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 they're downtown. That's just a lot of data to pull, to, to pull, pull out there. Yeah. Okay, so, so cable is certainly uh, an option there. In addition, we have Hawaiian Tel, you know, and, and they are soon to be Cincinnati Bell. I, I, I doubt they'll be, <laughs> they, 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 will, they will change their name, but again, another kind of yeah. consolidation. And I hope what Spectrum did on the cable side, that they, 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 they'll, they'll do that on, on the Hawaiian Tel side. And we are seeing parts of that. You know, I, I, I work from home, excuse me, and I have a Hawaiian Tel fiber and I have o Oceanic F4, Oceanic, excuse me. I have Spectrum, Spectrum? Yeah, I have Spectrum as well. 
and for, for, for redundancy. And it's gotten to the point now where before, if you didn't buy at least two of the services from either company, if you only wanted internet, yeah. it was very expensive, where they wanted to add on and layer things on. But now they've kind of peeled those back. So, so tell us about fiber with Hawaiian. So is fiber the best, the only way you should be going into your home or, or, or your, your business? I think fiber's been really growing a lot throughout the country. We, we saw... Um, we saw different things happen with the, the quality of fiber, uh, being able to manage the fiber. There's a lot of infrastructure that needs to get built out when you're implementing fiber. The cost of the equipment, the training for the technicians. So getting fiber to the curb, um, you know, it's been moving from, say, the East Coast to the, and the Midwest West. And when you do that, you're able to jump from gig, 10 gig, you know, to possibly 100 gig. And uh, when you lay out those cables, it's so costly to do that. You've got to future-proof it, and that's where fiber really matters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, in Kailua, you know, we're not worried about fiber to the curb. We want our power to come to the curb. Right? <laughs> I mean, and 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 you know, because like the power is overhead. All everything's overhead there, right? So so in, in the newer communities, I mean, Milani is a little bit older for that, but I, I hope. In Kapolei and all, all those new developments there, they are taking fiber all the way through the condo, all the way to, to the home. And you know, I, 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 know, I know the power's underground. So, so yeah, Hawaiian Tel is, is very competitive with, with their fiber. But again, there's a lot more cable. Cable is almost to every house. Yeah, the infrastructure is already there. Every, every, exactly. every business. Yep. Uh, Hawaiian Tel fiber is in particular areas. If they're in your area, then it's, it, 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 it's great, great news. So definitely, you know, I would definitely talk to both of those, you know, whether your business or with your home to go ahead and do those. Um, and then the, the kind of more on the fringe, the off, you know, on the big island, they talk about, you know, underserved, underdeveloped, you know, multi-million dollar homes because they have no internet, they have no power, they have no water, you know, but they're beautiful homes, you know, out, out Captain Cook and all those areas. And they have to go through wireless. And about 10 years ago, Clearwire had, was kind of making a foothold. And I think they had a three meg down service and, and 768 up or you know, very, 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 by today's standards, very, very slow. But it was mobile. And I know you for a fact, how often do you work off tethering so your, your, your mobile phone becomes a hotspot and your laptop connects to your your phone through Wi-Fi, and then you use your mo mobile data. How I mean, and, and, and that, that works out well for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I use uh, CDMA and um, and uh, GSM. CDMA. Now. Yeah. Is that is that like soup? That's a uh, <laughs> so you got Verizon and Sprint CDMA, oh, okay, and you've okay. got T-Mobile and AT and T that's okay. using, using their network. So, okay. um, you know, what I'm hearing is that the 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 networks are starting to use very similar technology, yeah. but I carry two phones because I need to be able to hop on one network versus the other, depending on the coverage in the area. So, and, and speeds and, are great. I mean, I get 20, 30 megs down from my phone. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And are you on a, on, on a pay per byte kind of plan, or are you on all, all you can eat? All, all you can eat. All you can eat. <laughs> fantastic. So, and and with with revision five LTE, you know, the generation five yep. coming out. And they're starting to roll that out. And I don't know why Europe always kind of seems, they seem to be a little ahead of us. But, but yeah, so I think in the end run, um, whether you just want to go off net, you know, and, and do mobile, because you can buy routers and just put a SIM card in there and do that. If you want cable, if you want fiber, you know, definitely call around and, and do some research. Because, you, you know, there are times we'll have promos where you can easily get 10 times the speed for half the cost. Oh, that's a very important and, point. Yeah. You got to call and ask. And now there's no don't don't sign a contract for internet service. I, I I don't know anyone unless they have to trench and like you mentioned, build to your business. If you're downtown or in any kind of established building, there's no reason for you to sign a contract. I totally Everything agree. should be month to month. And if you see something on on, on the news, you know, and, and you a commercial for something and. They'll tell you sometimes, oh, well, you've got to be a new customer to get this. Well, okay, well, maybe next time I buy internet, you, you know, I'll be a new customer because I'm going to switch to this provider. Exactly. You know, give it to me. Yep. And guess what? Uh, chances are you're, you're, you're going to get that. So th thank you so much, Greg, for having you, for coming on the show. Thanks it's for real, having me. Real pleasure having you. Again, my name is Matt Darnell with uh, Hawaii Tech Today. Hope you've enjoyed the conversation. If you have any questions or anything, you know, you be, be, feel free to leave those in the comments, and uh, Greg and I will be watching that. And we'd love to get back to you. We love both have a passion for helping small business and that type of thing. So thank you so much, and hope you have a wonderful day.